So I'm converting this truck from R12 to R134A Freon. Now I don't know if any of the AC stuff works. It's all as it is from the factory. The compressor does spin, which is a good thing, but I don't know if it leaks or anything. So I picked up a kit of these retrofit fittings to swap on on our high and low side so that way they can work with the R134 uh, quick connects. So let's put those in and then let's put a vacuum on this system and see if there's any major obvious leaks. So the two service ports are here and over here. So just clean up the threads and then we're going to just thread on our new fittings. So doing low side up here on the dryer. Well, so made my first mistake already. Hopefully you guys don't make this. So the Schrader valve that was in here on the low side, you have to remove this one. I didn't because it wasn't coming out. So I thought, okay, maybe you don't need to. So I screwed it in, damaged the Schrader valve on this side. So you do need to remove that. However, mine's not coming out of here. It's like there's not enough of an opening here to pull it out. So we're gonna just replace the dryer now. We were gonna do it later, but we might as well just do it now. And if we're gonna do that, I might as well just put new O-rings everywhere since I have them. So take the dryer off, just two nuts. This one you had to use uh, two wrenches to get off. And it's tight in there. So we gotta wiggle it just right. And then it will be able to pop out. Okay. There's one. And the top one. There we go. There's our accumulator dryer. And we're gonna replace all these old O-rings off. These are the black style, so the R12 style, which makes sense, but these are old and not doing much. So we'll clean it up, get some new green ones in, and we'll be able to throw the dryer in. Jeez, that was a fight, but finally got the nut off on the bottom. So now we can pull the POA valve out of here. It's pretty filthy in here, but that's why we're replacing it. So let's see if I pull it out now. So I have my, just as a tire compressor, hooked up a fitting, put some tape on it. So now it can actually blow air out. When I turn it on, putting pressure in the system not much but we're putting a little bit and it's coming out but there's a blockage in here as you saw when it's squirted back at me um, the orifice tube is stuck in there and there's a bunch of just solid material coming out that is not good there's just solid material in here. For instance, I just pulled this out of it and it's, it's solid. I don't know what this is, but it, it's not good for AC and it's brown, like rusty oil color. So either we need to clear this blockage or I got to replace this um, evaporator. I pulled out the orifice tube and this is what it looks like and there's nothing left inside i don't know if it broke or it's supposed to look like this but this does not look like the one that i received in my new package or what i've seen online i've never seen something like this before disconnected the two hoses that go in and out of the condenser we just want to prove that the condenser is not blocked so if i hook this up turn it on we should see it squirt out Yep, yep. So that squirts out very, very quickly. That tells me this is not blocked. We have nothing to worry about. I didn't order any AC flush because everyone online said you needed a big air compressor to blow it out because this wasn't going to be powerful enough. Well, if it shot it up that quickly, I think this is more than capable of flushing the AC system just picked up this AC flush. This is in an aerosol style can. It's 17 fluid ounces, I believe. So we should be able to flush out the evaporator and the condenser, condenser and evaporator. So I already blew out all the rest of the 
oil and whatever else was in there, nothing else is coming out. So now we're gonna flush it until it's clear. Now I just flush that in. some stuff coming out. Okay, now I'm going to use the compressed air to actually blow it out. I need the rag, I know this is going to shoot out. Well, as you saw, it wasn't coming out. I don't know what that was, whether there's blockage or what, but then all of a sudden it came out and then it started turning clear. So I'm going to say it's clean. <laughs> I think that did its job. So I still have some residual stuff. So I'm going to have to spend a minute vacuuming out the rest that I can and well, blowing it out first. And then when I vacuum it, that will boil the rest of the whatever stuff is in there. The evaporator is cleaning up. <laughs> You see it's coming out and it's not brown or anything it's it's just fine at this point i have every single ac line disconnected so all the o-rings are out now i just gotta go and replace them so i have a bunch of green ac o-rings uh, with the metal rubber compressor ones that go for the compressor Got some baby oil to lube up the o-rings as I install them. We're just gonna go around, put all o-rings everywhere. So compressor, condenser, evaporator. I think that's about it. Correction, these are the o-rings that came off of the AC compressor. And then I have a choice between these crush washer style or these just thicker o-rings. And I th think I'm gonna go with these ones. I think this compressor is supposed to be with just thick o-rings the even those these fit on there if you line it up to me it didn't look like it'd be a good seal so we're gonna go with these thick ones got this side all hooked up just gotta tighten these two fittings that go to the condenser now the dryer here it comes with the two o-rings so hook that one up had to buy this piece because the original style it was just one piece uh it was dryer tube so how to buy that make sure you do that all right now we have this old orifice tube now I, I looked it up this is early 70s it stopped in 75 which this truck is 75 so this is a brass style orifice tube and I'm gonna assume that this one with the sleeve here will work because this comes up as a replacement the other one doesn't look even close to working. That's a more modern style. I think this one will work. I believe I got the orifice tube installed correctly. So the sleeve must be some sort of adapter to run the newer plastic style instead of that big bulky br brass one. Uh, so I had to use, actually use this one to help me push it in place. But now it's in place, can't go any further and that seems to be good. Now I'll just lube up this o-ring again and we'll slide it on and we'll be good got the gauges hooked up i believe everything's done it's really not that much to it once you just get into it there's not much going on so it's this is very doable now i'm going to go ahead we did put in the adapter fitting on this side it comes with another one here i'm guessing this is just generic part maybe like the corvettes or something you need to use this one so i'm just going to open these up both of them 
Okay. We're zeroed out here. I'm gonna turn the pump on. We're gonna open these, both of them. We're gonna go all the way open. And we're gonna draw a vacuum. Now, after a flush like this, you're supposed to vacuum it for at least 30 minutes to boil out any residual moisture in there. But this vacuum test is just to see, do we have any leaks? I'm gonna vacuum it for a good couple minutes and then let it sit for a while. But then when I get back to it, if there's nothing going on, we need to add oil to the system. Well, it's been 10 minutes. We're still sitting at about 29 since you can't go to 13. Now I'm just gonna shut this off and we're gonna close these. And now we're just gonna hold and let it sit for a while. I don't know, an hour or so and see if it drops significantly at all. If it drops at all, that means we got a leak. So we'll just keep an eye on this. Well, I got busy, ran some errands. We're back the next day and we are holding right about where we left it. So that's pretty good. It's a little on the low side, so maybe we do have a very small leak, but it's holding vacuum and it didn't drop off significantly. It dropped off maybe one inch of mercury. So we are good to start adding oil to the system. And I realized I skipped a step. I didn't drain the oil out of the compressor. We flushed the oil out of everything else except for what was in the compressor. So mineral oil and this new pag oil that i'm going to be using they don't mix so took the compressor out here's the ac compressor the a6 ac compressor and as you see it has kind of like an oil pan a sump so this is our drain port and our fill port okay I loosen the drain bolt i got a cup here to catch everything into don't, it's not necessary to measure it at this point, but I'm curious, how much mineral oil did we have in here? Uh, like nothing. So I just poured six ounces into my cup here, measured it. We're gonna use a funnel to fit it into the valve here. It's gonna be tricky and hopefully I don't spill too much. So I'm gonna fill up six ounces into the A6 compressor here. Okay, got in the six ounces, just letting it sit like this to help lubricate that front seal. So now we are ready to throw this back into the car. Now we have the AC compressor installed again. So what I'm gonna do next is remove the line here that goes to the condenser and just put an ounce of the PAG oil in there. And then I'm gonna put what I have left into this accumulator here. And by spreading it out like that, that makes sure there's oil everywhere in the system. Since everything got flush, there's no of that other oil in there, so. Just about have everything wrapped up now. Now I picked up a V-Belt. This is the part number. Now this was the exact size I needed for the AC. That runs off of the crank. A little bit of the power steering pulley and then the AC. So we're all good here. I've already tested the clutch on the AC compressor. It works. We added our oil. Now, once this finishes vacuuming out, all that moisture that I just put in the system, we'll be able to add our Freon. Just 
keep doing this until it starts activating on its own. After cycling the compressor a couple times, it's pushing fluid through now. So pretty soon it's gonna, the clutch will click on, compressor activates, and the high side will go up. The unfortunate has happened. Watch what happens when I turn the compressor on. If you can see, just barely, we have a pinhole leak in the high side line here. That is unfortunate. Here you can see it bubbling out of the high pressure line. So this line has a hole in it and it must only leak under high enough pressure. That's why the vacuum pump never showed it. Uh, I didn't see anything else leaking and luckily this is shouldn't be too expensive. It just goes from the condenser here uh, to the orifice tube. So well we converted it from R12 to 134A but we obviously have a leak so I'm gonna have to take care of that leak in another video we did the conversion we added the oil but now I gotta replace a line evap the system um, and, and then add some more Freon so thank you for watching I'll see you in the next one